Cool, so taking a look at the Ableton side of things or the DAW integration, I can easily hit the in control button and take control of whatever DAW I'm using. In this case, I'm using Ableton. A lot of these things, again, can be mapped and routed to do a bunch of different things, whether you're using Pro Tools or Logic or any other DAW that you may be working with. In this case, the SL is really, really easily mappable and basically pre-mapped to everything inside of Ableton. Looking at track two, our air light, which is the new wavetable in Live 10, we can take control of the device, but not just up to the eight parameters that we have on the device itself. We can actually page through all the different parameters within any device. In this case, we got the air light. We have things like position. You can see there on the screen moving. Our filter cutoffs, resonance. I mean, literally, basically everything that the device has to offer, we can access from right here on the SL itself. Another cool thing, of course, we have things like our pans, our sends. You can access multiple sends if you got more than one. Um, you also have cool things kind of like arming and recording and soloing and muting. One of my favorite things is being able to change how the monitor is being affected. So if we look over at the screen on our green channel right here, the O Coast, I can actually change what channel five is doing. I can just set it to in, so it's always monitoring. I can set it to off or I can set it to auto. So in this case, I'm going to leave it to auto. That way, when we arm it, we'll listen to it. And if it's on in, it's in. Our faders here, long throw faders, take control of the volume. Cool thing, if I go over and we set up our drum rack, we can look at our drum rack right here, arm it, and if I hit grid mode, we have access to all the drum sounds within the drum rack, and we can actually scroll through them and see what we got available. Again, like I said earlier, the pads are now velocity sensitive as well as polyphonic aftertouch, which you can take full control of. And just being able to have the feedback itself of where you got sounds and where you don't is a great feature and the ability to kind of scroll through your drum rack in case you got tons of samples on here, it's easy to keep track of where you always are. With that, the cool thing is with the drum rack, I can say, I like this sound right here, right? I can go to options and change what set of parameters within the drum rack the knobs are now gonna be affecting. So I've gone from basically the drum rack macros down to the main part of the sound so now if we go back to the other side of things, we now have control over that specific sample. Give it a little fade in, change its transposition. And you can kind of just go ahead and sculpt and shape your sounds right here from the SL itself. Um, another cool thing within all of this, if we go over to let's say back to our uh, let's try this one out. This is another analog here. I'm gonna go ahead and arm it, switch over to that, which is this one here, right? All the hardware side features apply to Ableton as well. So if we go into shift scale mode, we are now in scale mode. Easy way to play scales and kind of stay in tune. The other thing we can do is turn on our arpeggiator. But the cool thing here is watch this. I can go to options and hit capture. And right there, it just captured what I played using the arpeggiator within the SL. Easily stop that. You can go into your clip, kind of select where you want it to be. So being able to have some of the new Live 10 features already ready to go plug and play right on the SL is a great thing to have. So one of my favorite things again is that capture feature. Having things like capture or basically just endless options when it comes to changing your device and what it can do and what it's doing to your sound right here on the device without having to jump over to your laptop or changing things like monitoring. It's like these simple little mundane things that you have access to here. You even have access to overdub in case you're kind of going through your clips, duplicating your clips, clearing your clips, uh, everything that you would need with Ableton. It's a great way to kind of tie what you're doing hardware sequencer wise and record that into Ableton in just the press of a button. All right, well, obviously there's a lot of really amazing features that have been added in the MK3 version of the SL. Um, man, it's really, really cool. It's definitely not your average MIDI controller. I think it's a really cool step in the right direction uh, overall for guys that are looking to kind of disconnect from the laptop a little bit and be able to integrate like hardware 
you know, and then have a really cool controller that can kind of handle like sequencing and, and all these other really cool features. Plus the tight integration with Ableton is just another, you know, really added plus. I think it's definitely taking it a, a step beyond. So I guess obviously the big question is, um, when will this be out and price point? Uh, should be available by the end of October and price points are going to be for the 61 I believe it's going to be 699 and then the 49 is going to be 599 are they planning to do like anything smaller than that or maybe like a, a big like 88 note I don't know we'll see I think they want to kind of see how these do you know for the most part but uh it's definitely not out of the question awesome well, we definitely want to thank the guys from Novation. Enrique, thank you so much for yeah, coming man. in and no giving worries. us a really you know, cool first look and overview of this product. Um, if you want more information, definitely head on over to the Novation site and get all the details and specs on the actual unit itself. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button below right here for the ADSR channel so that you're constantly up to date with everything and anything ADSR. My name is Mike Acosta from ADSR Sounds. Enrique from Novation, again, yeah, thank man. you for coming. Thanks so and much. And actually, we have another video for you because there is a lot more hardware integration that we weren't able to really cover in this particular video. So click right here over to you, probably on the left side of your screen or the right, depending on where you're looking at. But that's the next video that we have for the MK3 and it really covers all of the detailed intricacies and hardware integration using CV and gate. So we'll see you in the next video. Make sure you check it out. Thanks for watching.